Hello and welcome on Sports Update on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Ajishafe. We quickly look at stories trending as we look at NFF uh, to constitute uh, uh, the, the new board that will be at least uh, looking to the affairs of football in the MPFL, NWF, and also not forgetting the fact that they'll be doing that alongside the like of NNL and also NLO. Looking at that particular story right now, well, we'll be starting with that alongside uh, Busayo Olo. Okay, good to have you. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. And also a man of Fashimi. Good to have you. It's my pleasure. Pleasure to be yes, here. let's run through this particular story. NFF to constitute MPFL, NWFL, NNL, and NLO board. Uh, in the, at least, let's say in a month's time. Uh, that's where the story actually came out. And looking at the fact that uh, we've been having IMC uh, running the affairs of MPFL and also uh, even other leagues being run. But right now, uh, the board will be set up in the next one month. And uh, from the way it is, how do you see this? Well, it's a good one from the NFF. I, 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 from my own perspective, mm. I, I want to read the minds of the president. And uh, whatever I say, yeah, it's my opinion uh, at the time because um, I know that uh, they want to make sure they do the right thing. When I said the right thing, uh, along the line, someone said in the board that if it's for us to suffer for six months and look at the trajectory of where we are going to, then they are ready to take the pain. Mm. The six months is here already. They came in uh, talking about October, uh, September 30, and now the six months is April. So within the six months, they've been able to look at, okay, where's the vision? Where are we lacking? Where are we going through? What do we need to do? The IMC has been taken on. So far, the league has done well. They banished him, three points. Deduct three points. Fines have come. And even teams that they felt some people feel low, oh, they won't go there. Red Monsters was taking Wiki three, Bayesa three point. It shows that those guys are saying, if you do nonsense, we'll take you down. Mm -hmm. And we want to promote our league to a league where there will be investments, where people will come and put their money and get returns for the value of the money they put in. The NWFL has not gotten a board since the end of last time, where they had the Super Six in Edo. But the league has also run a race. Wonderful league so far. Today is going to be the end of um, games across all centers. Now we should be seeing fillers of results later, uh, very soon. Now, I, I think um, for those teams that have qualified, the likes of Edo Queens, the likes of um, Confidence Queens, Delta Queens, Delta Queens um, Bayesa Queens, and also... Um, um, no, um, Rivers, Rivers mm. Angels. Uh, so sad for our own Abuja Darling team, Niger Rattles. They had it all in their house to win games, but they lost one and drew one to Delta Queens, who remains unbeaten. Uh, so far, Delta Queens is taking on um, um, Rivers Angels in tonight's game. And um, it's a game they were already qualified. They want to win, maybe clip the unclish, um, unbeaten race. But looking at the board, that there's no board. Um, Aisha followed it to a stand. For me, she has done well into the league. And now there's going to be a lot of calculations uh, because we have two women for the first time in the board of the NWFL, uh, in the board of the NFL, rather. Yes. And looking at the two of them, they, the chairperson and the vice chairperson. And um, I was in the election in Benin. Uh, it was the election of uh, the first, uh, uh, talking about um, the, um, the FA chairman uh, from um, uh, Benin State, Honorable Margaret Ichin. They, she came in first, and at the time, I had lost in her first election, in the first round of election, she was third. And all of a sudden, the lady who was thought became the force. Well, I'm not going to the politics there. I, I, we all knew uh, how everything went. But now, the question is, how will that board be chosen? The volley said it's going to go to a woman. Who is going to over there? In the NLL, that's a question for their own side. In the NLL, I would say for me, they just had a figurehead chairman who would never do anything for that system. He rather believed in himself, enjoying his money, and well, failure has seems to come to uh, it's the race of uh, the NLL. They've done well managing it. Uh, look at so many teams. Crisis were happened over the weekend in um, Gateway, Smart City, yes, Smart City Gateway. Uh, some games already, but now they've also told them smash them three points and get it up. But the NLO, Shola Guna, was the CEO of the league, has done massively well with the chairman. They've tried got um, guest sponsors. I know in the four weeks to come. Give me to May 31st, you will see the list of the constituted bodies of this thing. Because from an insider, let something leave first before we take our decision. Let me cut it there. Well, besides you've made your point, but let's hear from Emmanuel Fashimi concerning this particular board to be set up by uh, uh, that's NFF, concerning all the five leagues. Now, if I actually want to uh, take from what Busayo has said, um, if you look at it, six months, 
they've given themselves six months to actually look at the loopholes and everything that they need to correct. Uh, but but uh, setting up of the board, will they be fair in selecting those who will be on the board? Who are those who are... It's not by selecting the board. Let those persons be do, uh, persons that know what football science is all about, what football business is all about. Don't just bring in people into the board and say, because uh, they were there for me during the election, they supported me during my election, let me compensate them. That is what happens in this climb. Mm. Once you support my political ambition, once I get there, I compensate you by giving you a position. Whether mm. you know uh, anything about that, uh, a, a, sec, a sector, Seconds. you are going to be, uh, you are, you are, in fact, you are favored to be, get the chance. But right now, if um, the NFF president wants to go by what it is, he should get those who are trusted, those who want our football to go to the highest level, who mm. wants our football to be the, uh, the talk of the town. And then let people say, okay, I'm going to Nigeria to invest in, in football. In, in football. In football yeah. Then so that we can make, so it's not by bringing people into the board, at the end of four years, they'll just put money into their pocket and they go and sleep and eat whatever. No, it's not, it's, setting up of the board is not bad. But who are those coming persons in. coming in? They mm. should be the right persons. We shouldn't just be, it should not just be a jamboree. Don't just pack people together. We are going to go and head this place. At the end of the day, there's no result. So we need result. If we actually want to go further, we need result. Like he mentioned the NNL, where I think that place, um, uh, we need, uh, they said, uh, <laughs> we need a very drastic, when I mean drastic action. action. So that, and that is the place where teams come to the top tier league of the, of the country. We get teams to come and play in the uh, uh, MPFL. MPFL. You don't see the APL, that is the English Premier League, playing with the championship. At some point, when the championship, during the coronavirus, the EPL had with some finances, they helped the championship. They helped some clubs. So that, that is the place they produce the best teams that comes to the league. So we should also, as in NFL, as a matter of urgency, should pay attention to the NNL. Mm. Uh, we, uh, yes, to the NLL, um, like I said, um, if I mention names, I, I'm not afraid of anybody uh, because um, it's, it's, it's good we say the truth. Uh, we can't have a chairman who is in the Senate doing, as a chairman, House Committee on Sports for go, uh, going because he has lost it all in uh, uh, coming back to the Senate. He, he, he didn't, for once, didn't focus to the agenda set for him in the last board. And like he said, don't bring anybody for compensation rights. Don't bring anybody, don't appoint anybody because, oh, uh, he worked for me in the last term um, when I was campaigning for the election. No. One man failed the NLF. And for me, when I saw him at the NFL on Monday, I was just asking myself, is this same man still relevant around football? Because I know he wants to do all in his power to win his FA, um, the his state FA chairman, who he has, what, he has been there for 16 years or thereabouts, even before I got to that state, and no change has ever happened to the football of that state. So if that kind of person is not doing well in the state, as a chairman house committee on sports in the Senate for eight years, you didn't do any viable program for crying out loud that person should not be part of our football in this new board i don't care whoever is watching to tell him i said that because it is a race our football must grow our football must shine we must get back to the glory days where we have people coming to bring money into our football and for crying out loud i trust the brian musa Gusso is a man of transparency is a man that believes that this is the best time to correct the wrongs of our game. We need to get it right, this board. And if you look at it, that this board, as people who are also runners of clubs in the NLL, in the board, so they know how it's spending them. They know that they need to make money. Go to the NWFL. Clubs are privately owned. Red Monsters are privately owned clubs. At the time, they want to have a private league, which the, the, the then uh, board um, said no. And if it goes that way, they will make money for themselves. Some players, they don't need to even play the uh, national team before they sell their players. Mm. From Red Monsters, you go to Inter Milan for crying out loud for 1.2 billion naira. He's making money, right? So now, let the money also go back to the Federation so that we can enjoy the goodies. If the money should even have a trench down to the media, to everybody that brings a good tidings uh, to our game. And um, for the NFL also saying that um, they will get ad on agents, on whoever that is not making our football grow. I think this is the right step that Gusso is, is taking and uh, his board is taking. And I say kudos must go to them. Just please hear the voice of us talking that don't bring anybody who is not competent, who is not worthy enough, trustworthy enough to do our football a, a, a good. 
Don't let him be part of the board. We've been talking concerning Nigerian football there. Well, right now, Nigerian Football Federation are right now saying they want to consider a new board for all the uh, leagues in Nigeria. But we also that they will get technocrats, people that really know the, the business, the onions of uh, running football business in Nigeria. That would be better for us because we need to get it right. And really, NFL has been coming hard really on uh, the issue of agency, the agent rather. They want to make sure things are done right in Nigerian football. Not forgetting the fact that they also mentioned the super egos players are not committed enough they will not be featured we just wait to see if truly that will be coming up but really <laughs> if you look at it it can be very funny because no, no, no. Uh, how do you know a player that is not committed Adeni. yes uh, knowing, a, uh, okay, knowing a player that mm. is committed yeah. now let's after you at, have given him uh, you have called no, let's him. look at um, uh, you've, the, if, if the, you invited the, him. the players we had in mm. the time past let's look at um 90s just downward a bit now when they call players to camp when did they resume? When they say come to camp, before you say Jack, mm. you see more than, in fact, the, the, the camp will be, in space of two days, all players will be on ground. Mm. But right now, when you call our players, some of them will first of all give excuse, they will take three days, some will come two days to the event, maybe the last time they will have their training, mm. some will be coming, some will say they have injury, some will say they have club commitment, no. Let, let, uh, let the right persons be called. We have players in Nigeria here. When you call them, there are boys who are ready to play. Not maybe because, fine, it's good for us to call the foreign players. Mm. But how ready are they to represent Nigeria? That's the question I ask. How do you know what who is, is their commitment? Uh, well, let, let me chip in something. Um, because me, I'm, I'm, I'm a present person around this all our national team. And um, just some... Um, before the National Cup of the Under-20, um, a player just came to the girl project. He didn't know who I was and said, my name is this other person. And I said, what club are you? He said, I played in um, my OKB in um, Spain. He was just speaking drama. I look at, ah, okay. So I, I just, okay. I bought my phone, check. And I was like, is this guy's name is out there? Do you even really said, I spoke with the coach. I saw him on, some days ago. He said, I should come for training. And... The head coach of the team was walking by my side and he could not recognize. And so this is the situation around agents who just lie to, to some players out there and says, come, come and come. I'm in charge of the day, oh, come and play. No, this is, it's to stop. I know some information that if I say here, yeah, maybe before I go downstairs, I'll have been seeing some... <laughs> so, please, let's, please, no, please don't say <laughs> No, because if you, if you are to correct our football, mm. um, thank God for the opportunities that we've seen outside. We've been there, and um, by the grace of God, the little one we've gone. There are things that need to be done properly. Uh, our, some agents are just making hell of the players because some of them don't even understand what they sign. Mm. So when they tell them, oh, fashion me, you're a good player, I'm taking you to uh, the national team, it tells you, Fashemi, your bonus is um, 1,000 US dollars for, for winning match. And, okay, I'm collecting five for it. Because he wants to play. He just comes to the camp and he sits oh, down sorry. there. Whether he's, whether he's training, he's, and when the guy is dropped at the time, and the guy is telling him, maybe he's playing, he said, Did I, when I brought your player, they're not training, match. he's not trained. We did not he has trained. So if the coach says he's not worthy enough. Hmm. So those are crises that comes with our national team that we need to take away. If you want to play for us, I've always said it, there are games that we can play our own base players, if serious we are, in our football. Well, we've been talking concerning Nigerian football. It's a big and huge topic that uh, if we have to continue to dig, we won't leave the studio. But really, we need to get it right. We just have to, uh, need to get the right people, round peg, round hole for Nigerian football to get developed. Uh, hopefully, it will happen, and we believe that uh, we'll get there. Now, from Nigerian Football Federation story, let's go talk about boxing. It has been a big one when it comes to boxing because the heavyweight uh, uh, boxers of this world right now, the top four, they are really fighting hard to see who, how will they meet themselves, where well, it seems on the net. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, deal has been struck right now because the news that we are having is the fact that by December this year, it's possible that we could be seeing AJ facing Deontay Wilder over there in Saudi Arabia. And also we have Alexander Yusik also facing Tyson Fury. 
if that will be happening, it's going to be a, one of the biggest, in fact, the biggest in the world of boxing, about $400 million has been slated for the four of them to do this particular fight that will happen over there in Saudi Arabia. Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder, and you have the man who is holding almost all the belts, that's Alexander Yusik, the Ukrainian, facing the world WC uh, <laughs> winner, they're talking about Tyson Fury. Well, if this actually comes up, that will be a very big fight. But now, the camp of uh, Deontay Wilder is saying, well, the ball is in AJ's court. We've done ours. We are ready for this fight. And well, that's what we're looking at right now. <laughs> well, for me, I don't know. I just feel <laughs> now, like I, 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 I I'm afraid for, for AJ. I I know, know. I'm not afraid for AJ because <clears throat> if you look at it, AJ is actually ready for this fight from my own uh, point of view. Now, um, when this news featured, I think that was last week, that uh, they are trying to do a, a four match, uh, a four match, uh, four, uh, bout. four bout, four bout Control. between the four of them, and that was why AJ two actually bouts, rather, two bouts. That was why AJ actually delayed his uh, next fight until December. I thought it was um, maybe they were just trying to bring up stories, and right now I think uh, a, a lot of um, <laughs> uh, news. The I think the true side of it is actually coming out, and I believe that is why AJ delayed his like, like, like he said until December before he was going to fight his next fight. But if this fight actually um, comes up, uh, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a beautiful one. It's going to be something that boxing uh, for a very long time is going to um, leave a lasting feeling in the world of boxing. Because these guys are not just, <laughs> they are, when it comes to the heavyweight class in boxing, these are the four people, these are the four fighters you can mention right now. No matter how we look at it, that AJ has lost three fights, but he's still in that, uh, in that class by beating uh, Fra uh, Franklin, I think, a few weeks, German, uh, uh, few German, weeks ago. ago. So if it comes up, uh, I think I, I even want to see the fight. I actually want to see the fight. I want to see Gentle Wider and AJ uh, doing that battle. Then uh, the Gypsy King coming up against Alexander Usyk, and it's going to be bloody. When I mean bloody, these guys are <laughs> pound for pound bossack. So uh, it, it should just come up for AJ. He should accept this offer. He should accept the offer. But the reason why I'm afraid the fact that uh, I know, yes, he's actually ready. But uh, I look at Deontay Wilder's wildness. <laughs> You know, it seems it's really, it's like a personal beef against AJ. I yeah. really want to beat down this Briton. I want to deal with him. Uh, you see this, you see, look at Deontay Wilder. <laughs> I'm not saying AJ cannot defeat him, but this fight. A well, AJ is a camp person. It's not like Wilder that talks Wilder too much. Wilder is a very rugged, mm -hmm. brutal. Wild. But, but I, I, I give kudos to Tyson Fury, yeah. who has actually silenced him. Yeah. Three times they met, once what no, draw, twice he defeated him to silence him. But he has been on AJ as if okay, I agree. Fury beats me, I agree. But you, I mean <laughs> Yeah, that, I to, <laughs> and that's why and that's why I feel AJ should oh, take the fight. Just to at just least to tell him, point. Hey guy, yeah. I have been trying to avoid you, but you've always wanted me. Hmm. Now let's go for this and I'm ready for you. Once so and for all. Before. Let's just go in. <laughs> because it's going to be if he wins and uh, maybe Gibski Kings gets to beat Uski. Usyk will have to fight him again hmm. and Gibson will wait for that because Dante is out of it. So he needs to beat Dante to go back into the top three where Usyk is still ranking one because he has three belts on his card in his cadre. Um, Gibson King ties the three as one. So he needs to beat Wilder and silence him. Hey, guy, I'm not your mate, which I believe is possible he could do. He just needs to take his camp. Hey, um, Tyson Fury didn't struggle in that bout. He knew what he was going to do. Give him a knock where he would not come up. And that was when, when it's, I, I watched that clip that day. <laughs> I still have the Yoruba version of the guy watching uh, from his home. And they said, Oh, that question shed, JT. But so, seriously, he was se serio seriously, I look at this fight, AJ Wilder. Seems to be it's going to be a wild fight. It's going to be a and wild AJ fight. AJ is a calm fighter. He's, he's not someone that actually. This he, guy he, will rush. AJ doesn't. You mentioned he, that. AJ that, doesn't uh, like. It, I think for Deontay Wilder, he has a personal. Um, he has a personal beef, beef with uh, yes. Anthony Joshua. And you don't take when it comes to sport. You don't 
take your personal beef or your anger, and before you know it, you get the shock of your life. Mm. And if uh, Wilder actually goes with that mindset, I tell you, he's going AJ to receive actually the beating of his life. That's just well, it. we've been talking concerning this particular fight boxing there. Well, the bodies in AJ scored. The only thing why that's come actually said this, and we are hoping that uh, AJ will prove them wrong by taking up this fight that will be coming up in December. If everything goes well, and AJ is able to win against the Ote Wilder, that will be a big one because uh, I don't want to call it bully, but uh, <laughs> it has become a kind of bully fight from the camp of uh, Deontay Wilder, trying to see how they can get AJ to get this fight, particular fight on. And for Tyson Fury, Alexander Yusik, another big one coming there. Who will win this particular one? Huh. Well, a big one. Quickly, let's move away from there as, as we talk about we have a Champions League games will be coming up. Uh, tonight, in those uh, games, let's look at the fixtures quickly. Well, Bayern Munich against Manchester City, who are leading fourth leg 3 0. And you have Inter Milan against Benfica, uh, they are also leading 2 0. Well, Inter are leading there. Well, right now, uh, that's the fourth leg now. Now, let's look at uh, the probables now, the possible lineup for Bayern Munich against Man City. As we look at uh, all the teams, Jan Sommer uh, could be there at the goal, uh, goal post. We have uh, Cancelo, Benjamin Pavard, Madis Delay, you have Alonso Davis, Kimmich, Goretzka. Retzka, Yamal uh, Musiala, Leroy Sane, you have King Liskoman, you have Shage Nabri. Yes, we know that uh, our Senegalese brother is on suspension right now. But uh, from the way it is, let's look at uh, Manchester City. Yes, let's look at uh, City's uh, possible lineup also. 3 2 4 1, there could be Ederson at the goalpost, Nathan Ake, you have Ruben Dyers, you have Emmanuel uh, Akonji, John Stones, Rodri, Grealish, Gondohan. You have Kevin De Bruyne and you have Bernardo Silva there from the wings and you have Ellie Haaland, the robotic striker at the front. Let's look at this uh, side, side by side. Uh, well, side by side experience, give it to Man City. I don't know how Tukul wants to go tonight. It's going to be so, so, so hard to score three goals against Manchester City. Mm -hmm. It's possible in the game of football. Bayern has done eight against uh, Barcelona at that Allianz Arena. Uh, but... Three goals up for um, Man, City. Man City in the first leg. Alan will play. There will be that bite. Somewhere, somewhere, a magic will just come. If he does not score, someone will score. Mm. So you can't take it away completely for this game. It's a battle that will go down. One team must progress. But at the advantage now, give it to Man City. They are not a team I see that will concede three at a rush. Mm. What about uh, <laughs> Emmanuel? <laughs> Well, if you also look at that lineup, if you take a look at it, uh, I think Pep Guardiola is not sitting deep. He's an attacking minded coach by playing four strikes, as in four, uh, one, four, two, three. And that's to tell you the midfield is already compacted with uh, Rodri and John Stone. John Stone and Rodri will sit deep. And then the likes of uh, Evan De Bruyne and Nicky Gundogan will be supplying the passes. And then the two guys from the flank. So I think they are going all out four. For for the kill for goals, goals. Well, but uh, also Bayern Munich, you would not the only the only weakness I see in Bayern team is uh, Leroy Sain. He has not been himself for over um, some time now, and uh, it was that same issue that happened between him and uh, um, our own uh, African brother Manny that led to the, the, the to the fight and whatever. But overall, for Bayern, they have done it in the past. Um, football is just is a surprising game. At the end of the day, we've seen teams turn up turning uh, Barcelona up turn four goals, and they, they at the end of the day they won the game. You so three goals can be cancelled. But will Man City allow that to happen? And it's not left to be seen. But I see a lot of goals from both sides. Bayern will not just sit. They are going to score goals. They might get maybe 2-1 two, or 3-2. Two, uh, two. Well, we've been talking concerning Bayern-Man City. A tough battle there at the Aliens Arena. Let's go to the San Siro, the one they call Giuseppe Miza, where Inter Milan will be at home against Benfica. First leg 2-0 in favor of the Nerazzurri. Right now, they'll be facing Benfica. Would they be able to do it and add more well, <laughs> woes to the wounds already that they are not? See, talking about Benfica. Uh, well, uh, if we can look at the probables now, let's look at the list of uh, players that will be played for Inter Milan. At the goal post, Andre Onana, Matteo De. Damian, Francesco Serbi, you have a Bastoni, Domfrey, uh, Barella, Nicolo, Marcelo Brozovic, Henry Makatean, Federico Di Marco is there, Lotero Martinez, I have Edin Dzeko. Those are the list there. Uh, looking at this particular Inter Milan. 3-5-2. 5-3-2, if you want to say, because they, um, 
Joe, um, Don Fries and, and uh, Jamaica will go in. But a man, I, I want to celebrate Jamaica on the show today. He was the killer in that last game. He just tried throwing the ball around. And it's done for in time now. I don't think Benfica will come back. Well, from mm -hmm. the way it is, let's look at Benfica too. Uh, hopefully, let's see what they'll be having concerning their own lineup. Can they do it against uh, Inter Milan? Uh, quickly, we have uh, Gon Carlo Ramos there uh, at the top. Odysseus Vlas Homodis, uh, Demos rather, as their goalkeeper. Alex Grimaldo, Silva, uh, Luis. All of them are battle ready for this fight. Chibato, Chiquinho, Altamendi is there with his experience. Can they hold it? 4-2-3-1. But uh, before we go, let me just add summarily, just one word. Inter Benfica. Inter. Man City, Bayern. Hard one. Bayern. Bayern. So you go for Bayern, you go for Inter. <laughs> now, if I have to reverse this, uh, Inter, uh, Man City, Bayern. Man City will go through. <laughs> You're going for Bayern. Uh, well, anyway, before we go, let me just give you two stories of a uh, transfer there. Harry Kane is PSG's top attacking uh, target this summer. Uh, they are where PSG want to make sure to get the English uh, player. And then Steven Girard is on the short list to be head coach at Olympia Course. Well, they've actually listed a lot of uh, 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 coaches, but uh, Girard is among them. Let's see what happened concerning that. Uh, in the studio has been a wonderful one, Emmanuel Fashemi and also Busai Olu. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. much. It's a pleasure. pleasure. Um, Adini uh, Gishafe, thanks for watching.